Welcome to the Picky Nerds. Today, we're talking about MTG slang. We're going over our favorite 100 magic slang terms. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us, you guessed it, the Nitpicking Nerds. Daily content is what we're bringing you. How to show your support? Go to the TCG Player link in the description. There you can buy cards, check out, and support us without spending any extra money. What? Crazy. Yes. And there's an up and running Kickstarter running through September something. 21st. 21st. Glad BZ remembers the date. Running through September 21st. That's the date that it's going to be ending. Go help us fund our Kickstarter, please. We got awesome stuff we want to squeeze into the gameplay now that the gameplay is finalized. So let's let's uh, talk about what this video actually is. So we're going over 100, you heard us right, 100 MTG slang terms. We're going to give you, you know, we're going to say, say what it is, give you a quick definition, or well, not a quick definition, a definition, and then we're going to give you an example so you can really soak in what it is. Yeah, and this isn't going to be like, you know, to the word, to the letter definitions, but this is everything you need to know. It's like your crash course in, what did he just say? What's the first? Let's, uh, we're gonna just crack in. I think we're gonna alternate and let's get right down to business so people can learn some stuff. Yes, the first one is two for one. This one is a classic. It just means you spend one card and you kill two cards. Really easy example, curtains call. Spend one card, kill two cards. Easy as that. Two for one. Alpha, this is an alpha strike or an alpha swing. It's, I think it's slang for military term. It's attacking with all or basically all of your creatures at somebody. Animate. If you have a card that isn't a creature, well, you probably pay some mana or do some effect to turn it into a creature. And then it can probably attack or block. Yes. An anthem effect. This is named after, uh, I think, Gaia's Anthem or just Anthem. Glorious Anthem. Glorious Anthem. It just pumps your team probably by plus one, plus one. Uh, any effect that boosts your whole team is considered an anthem. Yes. Archetypes. This is what kind of deck you're playing, essentially. There's a ton of different archetypes. We really don't go over many of them in this video, except for the next one, which literally is an archetype, but it's just the kind of deck. There's aggro control. There's a ton of different archetypes. Yes, Aristocrat is an example of one such archetype. It's, it is named after Cartel and Falconrath Aristocrats, which are sacrifice outlets, so a bunch of those go in a deck. It then becomes a Aristocrats deck looking to sacrifice creatures, gain value, recur things, etc. Yes. Next is bear, which is a 2-2 two, two for 2. And more specifically, a hate bear, which could be a 2-2 two, 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 two for 2, but it is a it is a stacks piece on a body. It's, it's like, a creature. Like a disruptive little runt. <laughs> exactly. A great example of that is Thalia, uh, Guardian of Thraben. Oh, yeah. Big butt. This one is one of the funniest ones, but if somebody, someone says something has a big butt, that might not be obvious. It means high toughness. If it's a 4-7, I can't check through that. It has a big butt. Yep, big butt. Uh, next is Blink. This is Flicker. Same thing, same concept. The idea is the creature is on the field. It leaves the field and comes back to the field getting all of its ETBs again. Yeah, usually Blinks are right away, right? Like it's just boop, boop. Yep, but uh, Blink and Flicker are used interchangeably even though they could technically mean different things. Yes, a blowout. This is a little self-explanatory, but if somebody invests a lot of resources in a play or a move or a creature and you destroy it or stop their plans... You've just blown them out. You wasted all their time and resources on this play. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, board state. It's the cards that are on the board, the cards you can see. All the lands, all every single permanent on the battlefield is part of the board state. Yes. The board wipe. This one is you take your hand and you just wipe the board clear of creatures, artifacts, usually all of one type at least. Oh, it's a board wipe for artifacts. Vandal Blast. Oh, it's a board wipe for creatures. Wrath of God. Plenty of ways to wipe things, but it just means eliminating all of one type from the board. Yes. Body. It's just, it's pretty simple. It's it's power, it's the power toughness of a creature. It's, if it's got, uh, does something on a 4-4 body, it just means it's a 4-4. That's its body. Right. Sometimes you'll hear, uh, oh, it's Phyrexian Arena on a body, right? It's just, they added a creature to it. Yeah. Uh, bounce. This means returning a creature from the battlefield to its owner's hand. Yeah, bounced it. I think... I don't even know where this specifically comes from, but that's what it means. Unsummon, Vapor Snag, Mystic Confluence, those are all examples of bounce spells. Next is a brick. It's when you draw a card from your deck and it doesn't do anything in the current situation. It's a brick. It's useless. <laughs> Burn. This is damage that can go to your player directly to the opponents, dealing damage to them. I can think of Fiery Confluence has a burn mode to it. You might say, oh, I burn them for 6 or I burn them for 12, or this creature burns you for 15. And it's like, what is that? Well, it's damage straight to you. 
A cantrip is a card that has a small effect, and on top of that, you draw a card. Great examples of cantrips. Ponder, preordain, seer and vision, all these are cantrips. Even like Elvish Visionary kind of falls into that. Mm -hmm. CEDH, this has a couple of different meanings, but basically it's the high-tier competitive play to win in most cases. Sometimes you don't, but commander. It's cutthroat, like let's play the best cards, no holds barred style. Yes. Next is cheat. Cheat means like just get into play without paying its mana cost. So if you put something onto the battlefield, from, say you have like something that taps, put a creature onto the battlefield like Quicksilver Amulet, and you put a 2020, you know, huge creature onto the battlefield, you cheated it into play. Chump block. When any creature is used to be thrown in the way of a giant creature or lethal attacker just to save you some life or damage or protect a planeswalker or something. Doesn't really matter what the creature is. It can be anything. It can be an insanely strong creature. But if it's blocking where it won't survive combat and the other creature will, it's probably a chump block. Yes. Clock. This is how fast basically you can kill your opponent. If The easiest little example of this is if I have a 2-2 flyer and you're a 4 life, I have a 2 turn clock. Combo. You're going to hear this one all the time on the channel. There's two types of combo. There's an infinite combo and a non-infinite combo. A, a non-infinite combo is just two cards synergizing really well to let you do the same thing over and over. And an infinite combo means you can do it as many times as you want. There's no cost. Next is crack. This means that you sacrifice a permanent to get an effect such as a fetch land. You crack a fetch land or you can like crack a chromatic star. Those are the kind of effects that are considered cracking. To curve or curve out means to play a spell and use mana efficiently on each turn in a subsequent chain of turns to where you are being as efficient as possible. You can say, I curved out that game. I really destroyed everybody. Yes. Dork. Usually this refers to mana dork. It's just a little tiny creature with some sort of effect. A mana dork specifically will tap for mana. Yes. Drain. This is slang for your opponents lose life and you gain life. Now, it could be that your opponents all lose one life and you gain one life, but also applies to like extort. It drains them for one, but they lose one life and you're going to gain three total. Eat. This is kind of the opposite of chump blocking, where it's kind of like you chump attack. If you have a big giant creature, uh, like a 12-12, and they attack you with a 5-5, you block it, you eat it, because it doesn't, it just dies. Yeah, it's literally the opposite end of a chump. Yep. The big creature eats the little one. EDH uh, this actually stands for Elder Dragon Highlander, which is what the format was originally called before Wizards sort of decided to just rename it Commander. Back then, your commander had to be one of the five Elder Dragons, which is where that comes from. And then Highlander, there can only be one. Up next is Engine. This is where you take a couple of cards that work together, and you can keep using them over and over again to either draw cards, remove things from the battlefield, et cetera, et cetera. ETB, three letters that stands for Enters the Battlefield. You can shorten a creature like Blade Splicer. When Blade Splicer enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 golem. Well, I can just say, what does Blade Splicer do? Oh, ETB make a 3-3. Three, three. There we go. So much faster. Yes. Next, Evasion. This means the creature has some way of getting through that. It, so it isn't just a vanilla on the ground. Evasion can be trample. It can be flying. Anything along those lines. Oh, yeah. F6. This stands for someone passing the turn and basically promising or guaranteeing in some way they're not going to interact. Uh, you usually hear this one when <laughs> somebody gets up to go to the bathroom. They'll say, all right, I'm F6'd. It just means play without me. I will not interact. Yes. Next is face slash dome. It just means that you're doing damage directly to them. So if, you, if someone says they're going to bolt your face, that means that they're targeting you with the spell. Yes. Fetch, usually referred to on fetch lands. But if you go to your deck to look for anything, you're fetching it. So you can shorthand search for two basics. You can say, I'm going to fetch two basics. Fizzle. This means that an ability has no legal targets and therefore does not resolve. An example of this is if Teferi Time Reveler targets to bounce something and then you sacrifice it, you fizzle the ability, they won't draw a card because it doesn't have a legal target. Floating. This usually refers to how much mana you have in your mana pool. If you tap seven lands or some kind of big mana rock that produces a lot of lands at once, you might be floating mana as you cast your first spell, which just means it's still in my pool. It's a way to politely tell everyone, hey, I'm not done. I have more mana. Next is vanilla, or French vanilla, because that's why this is in alphabetical order. For, uh, vanilla means that a card is just, like, just stats. It's just a 2-2 two -two for 2. A grizzly bear is vanilla. It has no abilities. French vanilla means it has usually, like, an evergreen ability. A 2-2 two -two for 2 with trample is French vanilla. Go off. This is a similar definition to combo. It means someone's deck is starting to take off, and they are playing spells at a high rate, getting a lot of value, producing threats, and whether or not you end up finishing with a combo, the beginning of that is considered they're going off. 
Uh, next is go tall or go wide. Going tall is shooting up a creature with a bunch of equipment, auras, and the, it's one creature. He's got a high, he's going to make his power toughness really high and just go all in on that. That's going tall. Going wide is it's yeah, it's going wide with your creatures. You're going to have like 20 creatures in the field. It's wide this way. Going tall means you're going to have to stack all the pieces so they go this way. Goldfish. This is an interesting one. It originally started, it refers to if you're playing a deck by yourself, your opponent that you're imagining is considered a goldfish, like literally a, a fish in a bowl because they can't take any actions and you're just trying to see how your deck goes. But also, the way this kind of translates to the commander is if somebody is just taking a long turn and they're just going crazy and nobody can stop them, it's called... I would call that, they're goldfishing. They're just, I mean, it's either a negative term where it's like, hey, you're goldfishing. Can we maybe not build your deck that way? Or it's like, geez, he's kicking our butts. He's goldfishing right now. Yep. Next is gravy. This is a nitpicking nerd's original term that we use. It just means an extra ability on a card that isn't really important to what its effect is, but it's there. Such as Yogmoth Theron Physician. Protection from humans is gravy. It's not, it definitely doesn't really matter to what the card does, but it's just a little gravy on top, making it that much better. That's why we have a gravy boat in the background. It's, it's over there. Yes. Grindy. This is to grind or to be grindy. It is a state of another slang term, attrition, which is one-for-one -one removal, uh, value, damage, a lot of trading off resources. And it's just when the game sort of slows down, you can call it a grindy game. Next, group hug and group slug. Group hug is a deck designed to give everybody at the table resources. They play things like Rites of Flourishing, uh, usually that Hippogriff I can't think of the name Feldegriff. of. Feldegriff. Feldegriff, they do stuff like that. Group slug does the opposite. It's more of a stacks type deck, and usually when it uses, it uses wheel effects and stuff along those lines, it's usually paired with something to make everyone else like, you know, how Hole Breacher was, but now it's, they've replaced it with Notion Thief, same thing. <laughs> yeah, I usually think of like Spell Shock. When somebody says group slug, I don't know why. Hard or a soft lock. A hard lock usually means your opponents or you cannot take actions, cannot cast spells. Their turns basically are going to consist of them drawing a card, maybe not even then, and passing. And you just kind of, that's almost a sort of, I've won, this is a hard lock, we can go on to the next game. A soft lock is where they're stopped from doing something maybe for a limited period of time, or they're stopped from doing one or two things, but not everything. I think a good card for a soft lock, humility can put a soft lock on a lot of games. Up next we have hold up. It means that you leave mana untapped so that you can use a counter spell in instant. It's holding up mana is mana to play spells on other players' turns. I will add, you can also hold up a creature to block. Yes. Hose. This means a card or effect is extremely detrimental to something in particular. Oh, they're playing a graveyard deck? I have rest in peace. This is going to hose them, as in they're not doing anything with this with this spell going up against them. Yes. Impulse draw. This is where you exile usually the top card or top couple cards of your library in order to be able to play them from exile until the end of this turn or the end of next turn. This actually comes from the card Act on Impulse, which, well, it impulse draws, actually. Infinite. This is a concept referring to an, uh, an endless string of numbers, but in Magic, when you can do something over and over with uh, no downside and no cost, uh, you're said to have gone infinite or you can go infinite as in pick a number, do the thing that many times, it's however much you choose, and especially if it's an instant speed interaction, no one's going to be able to stop you. The game's probably over. Next one's pretty simple. Jam. It just means you're attacking. You're jamming. Jam those creatures. Just messed up my hair doing a jam. <laughs> Kitchen table. This refers to the casual setting of magic. Fun fact, most magic games take place. It's like 90% of magic is kitchen table magic. Usually this is referred to as like very heavy casual, um, maybe not even necessarily knowing all the rules, just like your core, what makes magic the most fun of hanging out with friends, playing a very non-serious game with casual cards. Lethal. This means that you can knock a player out of the game. If It's simple. If you have a 4-4 attacker and they're at 4, you have lethal on board. A loop. This is where you can chain a string of events over and over. Uh, hey, he has Nether Trader out, and he can sacrifice a creature over and over and just keep looping this Nether Trader. Uh, that, that requires mana. There are infinite loops where that is when you can do something an infinite number of times. Add a Pitiless Plunder, and now you're looping Nether Trader an infinite number of times. Yeah, there's also finite loops. Yes. Next is Loot. This means that you draw a card, then discard a card. This comes from, like, Merfolk Looter, which was one of the originals. I don't know 
for sure what the original looter is, but that is what it refers to. You draw a card, then you choose from your hand, and you discard a card. Yeah, Faithless Looting is another fame one, but that came way later. Mm -hmm. Magical Christmas Land is the zone some people like to live in. It's just kind of taking a very idealistic approach to a scenario or a deck or a card and saying, this card must be good because, not necessarily saying it must be good, but saying, man, this happened and this string of unlikely events led to this awesome thing. And usually it's a, it's a, you're telling someone to get out of Magical Christmas Lane because it's not very helpful when building decks or considering cards. Yes. Mana fixing is a card or card that can get you more colors. So if you're in a five color deck, if a card gives you multiple colors, it's mana fixing. The best and easiest example, not that we advocate for this card often, Chromatic Lantern. It's mana fixing. It's the most extreme and easy way to look at mana fixing. If if you like, it literally is the poster child. If I had to write this in a dictionary, I would put Chromatic Lantern next to it. A mana rock, often a contributor to mana fixing, is a artifact that taps for some amount of mana, usually without uh, any other requirements. We're talking signets, talismans, gilded lotus. Those are all mana rocks. They can be big. They can be small. Soul Ring is a mana rock. Yes. Next, uh, mana sink. This is just a card with usually an activated ability that you can just throw your mana into. A re a, a fun, I like this is an example. It's not a great example. Helix Pinnacle, you know, it's a mana sink. You can throw all your extra mana into the sink. In some cases, that's like a mana black hole. You're never gonna see it again. <laughs> mana base. This is the uh, fortress of lands that you put in your deck. It's usually referred to when deck building. Oh, what does your mana base look like? Well, I got four fetch lands and a shock land and all these other basics. It's just what types of lands does your deck play overall? MDFC, modal double-faced card. This just refers to cards that you have that have two sides that you can play either one of. We usually use this to refer to the lands because those are the best ones. They have a spell on the front. On the back, they're usually tap lands, though there are some that can come in untapped. They're so good. Uh, meta or meta game. this refers to the overall uh, environment of decks in players you play against. You could say my meta has a lot of aristocrats decks in it. Therefore, I might want to make this deck building decision. Meta just is a way shorter way of saying all of the general decks I play against for the most part. Yes. Net deck. This is just going online and taking a deck. You're, when you net deck, it's literally taking um, just the straight up 100 cards for an EDH deck if you're going to do it and put in just making that exact list. No changes, no anything. That's a net deck. It's often looked at as very negative, but it actually isn't that negative. You're allowed to do it. There's nothing inherently wrong with a net deck. Exactly. A non-bow. This is when you have two cards that you control or own that do not interact favorably. Sort of like, hey, a creature that whenever it dies, I get an effect, but you also have a rest in peace. It's like, well, that's a non-bow. Those do not work together. Yes, they do the opposite of that. Nut draw. This is the best draw you're going to have. Perfect draw. Like, if you draw all these cards exactly, I can win on turn one because it's the nut draw. On a stick is usually used to describe a card, especially when it's on, like, let's say, an artifact. You can take another card and say, oh, it's Lightning Bolt on a stick for a creature that, like, taps to Lightning Bolt. Or it's Lightning Bolt on a stick. It's an artifact that can tap or sacrifice or whatever to deal a Lightning Bolt 3 damage. Good example is Collector Oof is Stony Silence on a stick. There it is. Outs. These are the cards left in your deck that can get you out of said situation. If you're playing, usually this applies more to one-on-one -on -one because... There tends to be tons of outs when you're playing four-player, but it's what cards I can draw that will save me from this. It's often said you want to play to your outs, which means you want to play to the cards that would get you out of this situation. Right. Ping. This is a small amount of damage usually inflicted by a creature. Anything can ping, especially if it's an increments of one damage. I think of Prodigal Sorcerer, which some people affectionately refer to as Tim. I think because he looked like the guy from Monty Python. Yep. Next is Pitch. This is where you discard a card to do something. Usually Force of Will is one of the ones. You pitch a card to Force of Will, the blue card, so that you can cast it for free. Yeah, it's usually like discarding or exiling. Play Around. This doesn't sound right out of context, but Play Around means to visualize a card or a series of actions your opponents could have and then play as if they had it, well, either because you know they have it, you highly suspect they have it, or because you can't lose if you avoid it plenty of different reasons to play around something, but it just means playing differently than if you had no information because you now have some form of information. Politics. This is talking with the players at the table to make decisions and make deals to come to, uh, to do something that you normally wouldn't do if you were just being quiet. Like, I'll kill his thing if you do this, or I'll wipe the board if you do this. Those are all things that they're not, not going to happen unless you're talking. It's all verbal. Politics are all verbal in Commander. Nice. Next, a uh, very 
not as nice as politics, but Poopy Baby, another Nifty Nerds original. There's a lot of different terms, Poopy Baby. So the first one is our patrons. We love you. We affectionately call you Poopy Babies. But the main use is to describe someone who's very salty, not happy, uh, not acting reasonably or rationally, and maybe just being just a little bit complaining. You know, the, nobody wants to hear about your bad beats. I'm sorry. Uh, the, I mean, the best way to think of it is they're a baby with poop in the diaper. They're crying. Right. They're not satisfied. A poopy baby. They're very uh, unhappy. Next is a punt. It's when you make a mistake. In, that's pretty much all this. Where you have the game in hand. You can win the game, and instead of winning, you just punt it away. And you just, it's done. You don't win. You just make a huge mistake, a blunder, you're done. Yeah, it's usually like a suboptimal action that leads could, you that, losing. They, right. That even just like leads to a huge detriment thing where it's like, you didn't have to do that. It's real bad. Yep. <laughs> rainbow, just a slang term for anything that can make all five colors. It's like, oh, that's a rainbow land. It produces either blue, white, green, white. Blue, red, you know, all the colors. Uh, next Black. is, <laughs> thank you. Next is ramp. This is just cards that give you access to more mana than you normally would have. Uh, when you're referring to ramp, you're not talking about um, another thing. We're going to talk about rituals, which we'll get to. So don't worry if you don't know what a ritual is. Uh, it just refers to like putting more lands in play, putting mana rocks in the play, a term we also went over in this video. That is ramp. I think in addition to like the obvious ramp metaphor of like, oh, I'm going upwards. I think it comes from rampant growth. Not 100% sure. Reanimate. This refers to a spell or effect that brings a creature from the graveyard onto the battlefield. Like the card, reanimate, which just does that for one mana, but you lose life. Yes. Recursion. This is usually bringing something from your graveyard to your hand. You recur it. Uh, you can also use the term recursion when reanimating. It also works. Kind of like a just general like umbrella thing. Ritual. This is a temporary addition of mana to your mana pool. There's spells like Desperate Ritual. They're usually named Ritual, which is why we call them Rituals. That's one or red, add red, red, red. It's barely any advantage, but when you stuff them all in the same deck, you can get a lot of use out of them. Yes. Rummage. This is kind of like looting, but instead you discard first and then you draw. Sandbag. This is referring to holding a spell or effect to your own benefit. I'm going to sandbag this and play it later. Some... I know other sports or like games can have sandbagging as a bad thing. You could probably see it either way. Um, but a healthy form of sandbagging is like, I'm not going to play that. They're, they're going to answer the threat. I'll sandbag it and save it for something I really need to answer. Yes. Scoop. This is conceding. Uh, the idea is like you usually, well, you take two cards in your hand and you kind of scoop all your cards together. Like a shovel. Exactly. You scoop them all up. It's You pick up all your cards. That's conceding. Screw. Um, other than getting screwed and having bad luck, mana screw is when you didn't draw enough lands to function. Unfortunately, you're going to miss land drops. And mana flood is when you draw too many lands and you can't do anything because all your cards are lands. Right. Without you, sometimes you're going to sleep the mana off. You say you get, you get screwed or you, you flooded. Right. Uh, next is shell. This is like in a certain list is what it means. If you say, uh, yeah, Grave Titan is good in a zombie shell. That's not true. But you could say it and you would mean it's good in a zombie deck or list. That's a little something for the people who don't like us bringing up Grave Titan. <laughs> uh, thanks for sticking around to 81 for this. Uh, number 82, Slow Roll. This is more of the negative side of the sandbag. A slow Roll kind of just means you were going to do something, but for some reason you kind of just took too long or you didn't play it right away. I usually view Slow Roll as negative and I view Sandbag more as neutral. A Slow Roll, a great example of a Slow Roll is your opponent's at three, he's tapped out, uh, you untap, draw a lightning bolt, and you wait for like 10 seconds. It's like, what? No, no, you just, he's tapped out. He has no cards in hand. You know all this information. Just bolt him. Just end the game. It's over. Yeah, or you take like five other actions and then just bolt them for no, like, why did you do that? Yeah, don't, don't slow roll. Slow rolling is not good. Spell Slinger. Spell Slinger is a deck that is casting a lot of instants and sorceries. Though a spell is technically, creatures are technically spells, when people say Spell Slinger, they mean you're casting instants and sorceries specifically. On the same note, Storm is a type of deck where you try and cast as many spells as possible on a turn because what Storm is, is, is it an ability card tap, such as Grape Shot, where they copy themselves equal to the number of other spells cast this turn. So you can also look at Spell Count, which is how many spells have been cast this turn. Storm is its own thing. It's an ability and it's very popular. Stacks type of card, also an archetype. They're going to slow the game down. They're going to negate resources from everybody. Usually, you find a way to break the parity of nobody gets to do anything. Smoke stack, I believe, is where mm -hmm. this came from. The deck stacks just played four smoke stack. Smoke stack's 
pretty good card. Yes. <laughs> That's, like, I was looking at it the other day. I'm like, this is probably really good in Commander. Yes. Stompy. This is playing big trample creatures. Usually red-green is the color of Stompy decks. You're just playing big, silly creatures. Uh, Xenagos is the Stompy Commander because you just throw all the big power creatures in there and you just slam. A Sweeper, very similar to a board wipe. It's anything that eliminates... I think of Sweepers more as creatures, but you could say, this is an Artifact Sweeper. It destroys all Artifacts and exiles all Artifacts. Uh, even return all Artifacts to your hand. That's what I would consider a Sweeper. Just removes them from the board. Check board wipe. Next, <laughs> Swing. See also. Uh, yeah, this is also the one we've done with Jam. Uh, swinging is just attacking. That's a that's swing. It's literally the same thing as Jam. Just get in there, Swing. Jam. I mean, you can't say, come on and swing, and welcome to my swing. That doesn't work. So that's what we have jam for. Yes, that is what we have jam for. Synergy. This is the positive interaction of two cards. We always advocate for packing your deck full of synergy. It means all your cards work together. They all care about each other. It's not just solo spell, solo spell, solo spell. Like, that's never going to win you too many games. You need positive interactions. Yeah, exactly. Next is tapped out, which I used earlier, and I realize that now. It means that all... Your mana sources are tapped. They're used. They're done. You have no way on. You have no way to interact unless you have a zero mana spell. You just you have access to no mana. Right. He can't. He can't stop you because he's tapped out. Time walk or a time warp for the newbies, uh, the players newer to Magic. It means a spell or effect that gives you an extra turn. It's a time walk. Oh, I hope I draw a time walk this turn. Obviously, time walk's banned. Any spell that gives you an extra turn is a time walk or a time warp. There's also uh, the negative turn for time walk when somebody casts, if someone spends all their mana on a turn, like say they cast a 10 minute spell and you counter it, you time walk them. You you basically took away their whole turn. Yeah. Next is tribe or tribal. This refers to creatures all of the same type. If you're playing a tribal deck, you can like Cranko, you're playing all goblins. And the tribe is, well, goblins. Tribal is also a type. Tutor, this is usually a card that will let you search your deck for any card. There are specific tutors like Enlightened Tutor searches for uh, an artifact or enchantment. And most of the cards that say search for something are tutors. So usually when you're searching your deck, you know, for anything other than like a basic land, it's called a tutor. Yes. Ultimate, this is a Planeswalker's biggest ability, usually requiring a lot of loyalty counters to do that it can't do for several turns. So you usually have to build up to it or have some sort of combo to do it right away. It's just, it's it's ultimate attack. This is also used in video games, if you know. It's just, it's your best move. That's what it is. Value. This is just such a general statement about your ability to trade your cards for more than what they're worth. If you are two for wanting, yeah, previous term, if you're two for wanting all game, you are getting immense value. Usually the person who gets the most value is the most likely to win a grindy game. Yes. Variance. This refers to a game's just chance, the things that can happen within a game. If you draw 20 lands in a row, that's variance. It's very bad and unlucky variance, but it's variance. And you have to realize that variance comes in all sorts of ways. That game where you draw 20 lands in a row, you can say, this should never happen. But that's actually the opposite of true. This has to happen to somebody. It's going to happen to somebody. It's incredibly unlikely for it to be you, but it will. And if it is you, deal with it. Yeah, here we are. Don't be a poopy baby. Uh, previous term. <laughs> I don't know why we're only starting to do that now. Voltron. This is named after the show Voltron when the five lion robots combined into one massive robot. It's putting all your eggs in one basket, suiting up a creature, equipment, plus one plus one counters, auras, and just making one giant threat. You're a Voltron deck or you could say he's Voltroning that creature or that artifact or whatever. A weenie. Just pretty much the same thing as a dork. It's a small little creature. It usually has very small power toughness. It's a 1-1, an 0-1, one, one, a 1-2, one, something really tiny. Looking to play Magic? I think you want that deck. <laughs> wheel. Discard your hand, draw some number of cards. It's universal. Those are wheel effects. Named after Wheel of Fortune. Yes. Whiff. This is go uh, see brick. Uh, it's where you draw a card off the top and it is useless. It's it's a brick. It's a whiff. It's just it's nothing. It's not useful. Also used for the termination of combos. If you're starting a chain and it requires you to continue uh, hitting some certain outcome and you miss and it all just ends up with nothing, you whiffed real hard. And the last one, it's a wrath. See also board wipe, sweeper, etc. It is destroy all creatures named after Wrath of God. Yes. And that is our video. Special shout outs to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can. But without making you uncomfortable, obviously, because we would never. And I mean never. Never. 
want to make you uncomfortable. Thank you all for all the support. If you haven't supported us on the Kickstarter yet, it'd be awesome if you head over there and help us to fund our goals. Yes, hopefully this video was helpful. I know it's more of like a it's fun newer player topic, but you could definitely share this with people who don't know these terms. I'm willing to bet, you know, maybe the majority of people don't know like one or two terms and it's just fun to listen to us talk about whatever. So go check out the TCG player link if you like listening to us, listening to us talk about whatever. Buy the cards, check out. As long as you start with the link, anything that happens after that is gravy because we're going to get a kickback courtesy of TCG player, not even you. Yes, we would appreciate that. Well, a lot. A, a very large amount. A very large amount. So we've talked about everything. We have a Patreon, or not Patreon, we have a Discord. Go to the description, join the Discord. There's over 3,000 Picking Nerds fans in there. Poopy babies. Hop in, come say hi to us. Feel oh, free to yeah. DM us. I guess it's time for a tidbit about our lives. It's your turn. Okay, I mean, the only thing I can really think of that I was doing last night, it's magic related, sorry, was I finally rebuilt a Skullbrier deck. I wanted to include all of those, like, wacky Aquaria counters cards. So I just spent like an hour and a half and put that deck back together. I took it apart to build a Masaryk deck. And I guess I'll turn this into a PSA. Masaryk was, I love that card. That is not a fun deck to play. It turned into, can I combo or can I not combo? Well, that's lame. I don't want to ever be able to combo. I just want a cool counters deck. But you can't not play the combo. And your opponents can't not assume that you play the combo. So they're just going to kill it. And it's five mana and you're never going to get to play it. I have to come up with something else. That feels like cheating. Cheating. That's Doing magic? Like, that's, that's what I did. The, the, the whole that's idea, what I did yesterday. Well, I know, but the whole idea is like it's a tidbit about our lives. It's supposed to be non-magic related. We talk about magic. Eh, it's not inherent. Literally every single day on Guess here. what? Tough for me. You can, you can feel free to add to that. Um. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I, yeah. I, I don't have anything. Deal with it. Uh, peace out, Chapsco. Mm -hmm.